Welcome to Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy. I love Baron Zemo. He's a genius, a badass, and he's out to avenge his family. He's like the MCU's evil Batman, except he's a better dancer. But we think that not only is Zemo not only one of the MCU's greatest villains, but he's about to become one of its greatest heroes. Oh, uh, what? That's right, Zemo is going to lead the next great MCU super team, the Thunderbolts. Someone can create an army of people. Like the Avengers. Falcon and the Winter Soldier and WandaVision have shown that the post-blip world is in chaos. And considering that Phase 4 has just started, I have a feeling that things are about to get much worse in the coming years. Now this global chaos actually kicked off with Zemo's actions in Captain America Civil War, so it only makes sense that he'll play a pivotal role in this new, unstable world. First, let me give you a quick recap on the Thunderbolts and the Dark Avengers and how they'll fit into the MCU. In the comics, there was a brief period where everyone thought the Avengers were dead, and so a new team showed up to fill the void, the Thunderbolts. But then it was revealed that they were actually villains being led by Baron Zemo all along. What? Now, of course, Zemo never wanted to become an actual hero. His master plan was to use the Thunderbolts to achieve world domination. Years later, Norman Osborn formed a similar team called the Dark Avengers. This was a team of villains that posed as established Avengers heroes. This is when Norman Osborn was briefly in control of the world's global security. Both the Thunderbolts and the Dark Avengers will fit perfectly into this current slate of the MCU. If they chose this Dark Avengers route, then Zemo could actually lead a team of government-controlled villains, posing as the new heroes of the MCU, like if the Suicide Squad LARPed as the Justice League. Aquaman, you go! Talk to some fish! <laughs> and so, let's theorize on how Zemo's Thunderbolts will be pivotal to the future of the MCU in the coming years. Zemo only agreed to work with Sam and Bucky because of his pure hate for super soldiers. Desire to become a superhuman cannot be separated from supremacist ideals. But once the Flag Smashers are dealt with, we all know that Zemo will once again target all superheroes. I mean, after all, he blames heroes for the death of his family. Like I said, MCU's Batman. He's the best kind of villain, the one with justified motivations that the audience can relate to. He's also made some very interesting arguments about people with superpowers, such as the Avengers and Super Soldiers. The guy literally compared Earth's Mightiest Heroes to Nazis, and made a good point. That warped aspiration that led to Nazis, to Ultron, to the Avengers. Hey, those are friends you're talking about. And when Zemo delivers his arguments, he sounds very reasonable and persuasive. Now, we fans know that the Avengers are the good guys, but according to Zemo, no one with powers can be trusted, so they must be destroyed. He's the Billy Butcher to the Avengers the Seven. What'll be interesting is if his argument can win over others in the MCU, either the public or the governments in control. Now, Zemo explained in Civil War. An empire toppled by its enemies can rise again, but one which crumbles from within, that's dead. And what better way to destroy the Avengers from the inside than to assemble the Thunderbolts, a team of villains who will pretend to be the Avengers. With a team like that, Zemo can turn the public against superheroes for good and prove to the world that heroes are corruptible and cannot be trusted and therefore must not be allowed to exist. Superheroes cannot be allowed to exist. It seems like the Sokovia Accords have mostly been forgotten after the events of Endgame. I guess it would be kind of awkward if the government just starts arresting superheroes after they save the whole universe. But WandaVision proved that this honeymoon period is on borrowed time. And earliest tracking had her using her powers against the Avengers, is that correct? Wanda, a former villain, mind controlled the residents of Westview and kidnapped all of their children. She's basically the thuggies from the Temple of Doom. Wanda has essentially proven Zemo's argument. Now, we do all relate to her and what she's going through, but she still terrorized an entire town. A traumatized, reality-bending witch is a clear threat to national security. And Wanda carelessly using her powers is what created the Accords in the first place. The world is filled with powerful people who have godlike powers, crazy advanced tech, and then there's the big three. What big three? Androids, aliens, and wizards. These threats and global destabilization are about to reach a boiling point. I mean, just wait until people find out about the scrolls. But where are the Avengers in all of this? Yes, the big battle against Thanos had everyone. Everyone! But based on what we know, it seems like the Avengers went their separate ways after the events of Endgame. They don't have a leader to unite them. Iron Man and Black Widow are dead, Steve Rogers and Hawkeye are retired, Ant-Man is Sandman, and Hulk is down to one lucky Finn. 
Now the Avengers are no longer an official team, so just like in the comics, Zemo will take advantage of this chaos to assemble the Thunderbolts, or the Dark Avengers, whichever we want to call them in the parlance of our times. Zemo is a rich baron with deep connections in the criminal underworld. He's very good at manipulating people and knows all of Hydra's secrets. With all of these assets, he can convince other villains to join his team and follow his lead. But since he's a wanted criminal, Zemo will have to use a secret identity. And like in the comics, he'll get his own superhero mantle as Citizen V. Or if they choose to make the Thunderbolts a government sanctioned team, he could be assigned the Iron Patriot armor from Iron Man 3. In the comics, this armor was originally worn by the leader of the Dark Avengers, Norman Osborn. Bingo. Me. Yes, that Norman Osborn. Now, before we talk about the Thunderbolt's larger role in Phase 5, let's quickly theorize on who might join Zemo's team. The MCU's Thunderbolts will likely include a bunch of new villains that are going to be introduced in Phase 4, as well as some returning villains from previous phases. Now, we can assume that John Walker will be part of the team. Considering his flimsy mental state, he'll be easy to manipulate. Because I'm good enough, I'm smart enough, and doggone it, people like me. Plus, he'll want revenge on Sam and Bucky for not letting him join Cap's best friend club. See, the Dark Avengers weren't all villains. Some of them were like Walker, heroes who wanted to react to violence with more violence. Despite Zemo's hate for super soldiers, I'm sure he'll make an exception for Walker as long as it serves his goals. We'll also see some villains returning from previous phases. For instance, Tim Roth is coming back as the Abomination for the series She-Hulk. But what we really want to see is Thunderbolt Ross go full villain and become the Red Hulk. I could probably arrange something like that. He would be a perfect fit for the Thunderbolts. He even led his own version of the team in the comics. He hates heroes. He'd be perfect. And everyone wants to see this. You can either surrender peacefully or you can resist. Please resist. Then there's Ghost from Ant-Man and the Wasp. Because, think about it, her condition was never fully cured. The Pims were dusted before they finished helping Ava Star. Then, Scott was trapped in the Quantum Realm for five years. And, when he got out, he had more important things to do, like saving half the universe. So Ghost was left on her own, feeling betrayed with limited time to live. That desperation probably resulted in her return to crime. Now, this all makes her a prime candidate for Zemo's mind games. Now, speaking of returning villains, here's hoping that Sam Rockwell will make a comeback as Justin Hammer, but this time in his own Iron Man suit. Wow. Tony Stark's death left a void in the armor tech department, which could open the door for Hammer's return. There are even rumors that he'll appear in the upcoming Armor Wars show. And a personal favorite of ours is Taskmaster. It would be a huge waste if his appearance in the Black Widow movie is just a one-off. Taskmaster is such a great villain, and I hope to see him join the Thunderbolts. Bad dude. He can copy anyone's fighting style just by watching it. He tried to recruit me once. Stash! How do you keep doing that? But there are plenty of other villains or anti-heroes floating around the MCU. And like I said, the new phase is going to introduce lots of new villains. The Thunderbolts have a rich history in the comics, so there's a lot of options for characters. The main thing is to build an interesting team that will serve as a great contrast to the Avengers. Now, back to Zemo. I think he will use his Citizen V or Iron Patriot persona to work with the government. The government is already taking steps against heroes, like Sword going after Wanda. And now they're also creating their new heroes, like John Walker and Manet's Vision. I request elaboration. Actually, yes, Manet's Vision should also be on the Thunderbolts. Zemo is currently locked up in the Raft. Last we saw, this facility was overseen by General Thunderbolt Ross a guy who hates superheroes and wants to control them. So if he forms his own group, they could even be named after him, the Thunderbolts. So you see, the seeds have been planted. The government doesn't trust heroes, and all Zemo needs to do is swoop in and pour fuel on that fire. Zemo is a master when it comes to using misinformation and distrust. Do you see these men there? They're very bad. Not to be trusted. Donya is our little secret, okay? He knows how to manipulate situations to achieve his goals. And he's a master of playing on people's worst fears, causing panic and suspicion. Zemo used these tactics masterfully in Civil War when he framed Bucky for King T'Chaka's death. And then he brought two friends and allies to the brink of killing one another. This isn't going to change what happened. I don't care. He killed my mom. And so, by using his superhero persona, Zemo will manipulate the government into giving the Thunderbolts full authority and power. 
Zemo would enforce the Sokovia Accords more aggressively, causing friction between the heroes and the people they're trying to protect. But don't forget, Wakanda is also gunning for Zemo. He blew up the UN. He killed King T'Chaka. Did you forget that? You think the Wakandans forgot about it? So he might play the United States against the more technically advanced nation. The reveal that Wakanda is a global superpower might not sit well with the more suspicious members of the government. And incidents like Walker and the Dora Milaje fighting over jurisdiction might escalate into a conflict between the USA and Wakanda. Now that is a great setup for Black Panther 2. I think the upcoming Disney Plus shows are building toward a big crossover where Zemo's Thunderbolts face off against a new team of heroes, the Young Avengers. Now we did a video about that, check it out if you have time. But this needs to be more than just another big battle. No, Marvel needs to dive deep into the complex clashes of ideology, politics, and morality. The threat that Zemo and the Thunderbolts pose to the Avengers is a personal one. Zemo aims to compromise the Avengers in the public eye, destroying the very idea of superheroes. It's so much more than just saving the world or the universe. This is a battle that defines everything for the Avengers, who they are as heroes, what it actually means to be a hero, and what are the consequences for the choices that heroes make. Plus, the battle between the Avengers and Thunderbolts will be pretty awesome visually. Two distinct teams clashing with each other is a nice shift from the usual battles that we tend to see, where it's one team of heroes clashing with an army of CGI lookalikes. We've seen a lot in the MCU. Wizards, raccoons, epic battles, sitcoms, but we haven't seen an actual team of supervillains. This is the next best threat to the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and I can't wait. Luckily for you, I know where to begin. Now, with all that being said, what do you think? Let me know in the comments below or at me on Twitter. And if it's your first time here, please subscribe. For Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy.